Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Bytes Blogger Z and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his creeper bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge I fought the Okay, troll and welcome to Tech Bytes Audio Cast, episode 53. It's Tuesday the 5th of July 2011. And uh, this audio cast is with myself, Tim, and Roy, who's going to be coming on very shortly. Today's show, we've got a mishmash of subjects. Um, there's been quite a lot of news happening and um, not a lot of time for me to post much on the site. So uh, we're going to have a, hopefully a few good discussions and cover quite a bit of news today. So without further ado, I'll take it straight over to Roy and Roy can start us off for the first topic. I don't know how many people have actually posted anything on the site uh, since at least Friday, if not Thursday. Um, of course, it was Independence Day in the United States and... Uh, Everyone in the English-speaking world pretty much depends on the uh, on the press releases coming from the states. Uh, so this whole weekend, I, I think, has been fairly slow. I, I took like quite a few days off uh, from the computer, from most of the activities. Uh, so any of the things we speak about, I believe, will be from like last week mostly. Uh, some people still have the day off today, Tuesday. Um, I think one of the major new pieces of news. Uh, and usually I try to start with the Linux story, uh, probably because I'm a bit, shall we say, biased towards the uh, Linux as an operating system. And even though the show is not just about Linux, we do tend to cover it as the uh, operating system of choice. But one of the good things about the uh, uh, about the HP situation uh, is that the, as, as you probably know, uh, Palm was acquired by HP, I believe. Uh, at the end of last year, do you can you remember roughly? No, and I'm going to rely on your superior knowledge more either. No, no, I, I don't. Have, I just I just keep track of news. Uh, I, I believe it was around the, maybe the middle of last year. HP bought Palm, which was building a proprietary operating system which incorporates Linux and incorporates components that are uh, usually associated with Linux. So all kinds of uh, libraries and packages that allow you to communicate with other things from the outside, uh, file sharing and um, um, trying to think of perhaps even Apache to some extent. Uh, uh, basically part of this operating system but everything else like the interface is proprietary. So um, HP plans to have some tablets and some portable PCs and things like that uh, running their operating system called WebOS. Uh, they had the phone that's called uh, Pre, and I think they had a Pre Plus or something like that, which was a successor of the same phone, or a small version of it. Uh, and one of the things they think about doing now is to license the operating system to companies from the outside, uh, so that not only HP devices will have the operating system, but perhaps companies like Samsung, which I don't like because they pay Microsoft for Linux, uh, might have some devices based on that instead of, say, Android or that's well, Android. I suppose Samsung's just doing a very, very few Windows devices now. Like uh, when I'm speaking about devices, I mean things like tablets or, um, or phones, especially not not, not computers, which they also make to an extent. Um, and you know, if if we have more of these uh, operating systems, very light, very simple operating systems that emulate the, or at least resemble the experience that you have in, in OS X from Apple. Uh, that'll be quite a uh, quite a breakthrough for Linux as a kernel. I'm not too sure about the free software desktop and the freedom of users because uh, what I try to always explain WebOS is basically proprietary, yes. yeah, and Android is the more open one. I mean, I think I've certainly always said that choice and the more choice, the better. A very interesting point was brought up in Cola recently. For those that don't know, Cola is a is a news group on um, 
and it stands for COMPOS uh, Linux Advocacy. And a very interesting point was uh, brought up in regards to that whilst choice is very good and we want the more choice the better, you have to have a quality selection within that choice. And uh, from what I've seen uh, of WebOS and what I've read, it seems it does seem very, very good. It's light, like you say, Roy. And I think now in the day we've got uh, so much choice for the end user, you really can pick something or pick a piece of hardware which is running an operating system or platform that really does suit your needs and fits your needs perfectly. Um, I had an interesting link, which I'll hopefully have for the show notes. It was a comparison, I think. It was with a site, uh, I think it was with CNET or a site similar, where they'd done a comparison of all the tablets and uh, three of the top tablets. Uh, there was obviously Apple and and it was very interesting their comments on um, the Windows tablet in particular because they didn't, they couldn't recommend it over any of the other tablets and seemed to suggest from my understanding of the of the review that Windows 7 uh, was completely unsuitable for for the for the tablet form factor, which is something I think we, which we've discussed uh, many times before on the. Um, on the show. Actually, it's interesting because you know one of the uh, key points uh, that they said Windows 7 has got over Vista. The reason I call it Vista 7 is one of the main things that they did there was make the icons quite large in the, the desk bar and mm-hmm. talking about touch screens, like, you know, oh, Windows 7 is going to support touch screens and you can do this and this with experiences. And they used to actually demonstrate the operating system mostly in very good hardware that contains, in fact, the uh, Touch screens, also from companies like HP. I recently saw this in uh, in uh, uh, in Curry's when I, I went to the shop. I, I see that the HP computers run the Windows operating system, uh, and they try to brag about the touch screen. So you would think that Microsoft would aim at the uh, tablets uh, market, but the thing is the operating system is too fat, and I I cannot remember which CEO which company said that. But they were in fact complaining. It's, it's just it's too thick, and it was also too clunky for the um, for for a touchscreen uh, technology. I, I do remember something that BBC Click actually did quite well when they repeatedly challenged uh, Microsoft on on a similar issue, and uh, the answer or the retort from Microsoft and Steve Ballmer in this instance was uh, well, it's got a keyboard, and it so it wasn't particular tablet at all. It was sort of like a hybrid transformer type netbook stroke tablet machine. Um, and one of the main points was made that it was very clunky to use. Um, but yes, more choice is good. Um, it doesn't maybe suggest why Windows 8 appears to be suddenly mentioned a lot in the press and suddenly being thrust into the limelight. Well, this is interesting since you mentioned CNET. You know they're pretty biased. And I, I had the uh, well, thing about an hour ago. Somebody sent me a uh, dent, or you could call it a tweet, I suppose. I usually get them both if a person is at both networks. But... Uh, this person had the uh, concerns about um, about seeing it. I'm trying to remember the context, and uh, uh, he basically told me about something that was going on in CNET because he knew that there was bias. And my explanation was that usually what I say is the way to pass bribes to the media networks is basically to do what they call advertising. So even if the advertising doesn't pay off for you, it's a way for you to justify you give them some them some money, uh, and they will mention your products more often. So uh, if I was CNET, I would, my business model would go something like this. I, I would say, well, we offer some spaces for advertisers. Uh, it's quite expensive, but if you buy adverts from us, you only have to pay us lots of money. And what we can then do is to select uh, certain writers who will be specialized in Apple or in Microsoft. And they will yank out lots of things about your company, which is always good. There is no bad publicity if it gets mentioned. So these sites become a a very kind of a, a, a hub for uh, coverage for certain companies, and they will ignore those who don't get the advertising. It's very similar with analysts, with the uh, reports they generate. That's the way to pay them, is to just say, well, do me some reports, and you pay them these crazy prices like $10,000 for it. You know, ten-page report, and who knows what else they pay for, and then they will say nice things about you because they'll look forward to the next contract they have, uh, and they will try to please the customer that they have. So this is uh, th- this is why, as as you mentioned, seeing it, I, I just kind of think the first the first thing I keep hearing p- people tell me about the uh, deals they have with Apple and with Microsoft because Apple also spent billions of dollars now. And they have apparently more money than, than Microsoft does. So they also spend a lot of money just trying to ensure that the press goes on about, you know, the iPad, 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 everything iPad. 
and you kind of say, well, we have about a hundred tablets running Android. Why don't you mention these as well? But apparently there is no money in that. I'll make a quick correction um, on my original uh, statement from uh, the tablets uh, summary that I mentioned earlier. It was actually Tech Radar. I've now found the link. Um, that will be in the